morning guys it's another day another bright day here in Aruba just woke up and I just weighed myself and actually dropped some weight I weigh 112.2 which is only 200 grams above the weight limit and I didn't go to the bathroom yet so that means the day will be a higher day <coughs> I don't want to make the mistake of actually um, you know dieting down too hard and losing the fullness that I still have right now and I want to be in ultra condition and if you're flat on stage you won't be as conditioned so you won't be full and you won't be as conditioned which would be a problem so what I'm going to do right now is uh, it's a leg day today so that's perfect match it's going to be a high day so the breakfast will be high I'll be having um, carbs in almost every meal the last meal won't so I can actually get a proper more accurate way in tomorrow as well to see what the high day did and we'll then see what happens so uh, let's do it alrighty just did some cardio about 3,000 steps so a little less well 3,500 steps a little less than usual today's a leg day and I want the energy to be in the legs obviously the shape has improved the weight is improved which is why I'm making this decision to have a higher carb day so this is hundred grams of cream of rice put some cinnamon in there put some um, potassium salt in there so Himalayan pink salt in there and yeah that's it I'm gonna be adding some isolate to this as a protein source some uh, dark chocolate and some blueberries so that's gonna be the meal and let me show you when it's finished and also the kiwi by the way of course never forget this Alrighty, now this is the meal, a nice and creamy cream of rice. That's why it's called a cream of rice, because it can be nice and creamy. If you cook it right, this is with about 650 mils, 100 grams of cream of rice. So that's already half a shaker cup or more than half of water, which you automatically take in, which is important. And we again have the chocolate and the blueberries and the way isolate. So a very simple meal with, of course, the kiwi included so let's enjoy this meal and we're going to train legs later on so that's going to be exciting let's attack this one okay guys actually just took a nap right after the breakfast well at least i attempted to take a nap and uh, you know it's always nice to relax um, when you're feeling very tired and the emails are going really well so normally when i'm back home you're a lot more busy with other things as well. So sometimes the emails stack up and then you have to work for hours on end, but now it's going very efficiently and I'm able to answer everybody within the same day, which is awesome. But let me actually show you the meal that I'm making right now. This will be my uh, pre-workout meal for legs. Right after this meal, I'm gonna actually have an online clinic with a Dutch powerlifting um, organization. So uh, they were interested in getting information from a professional Dutch bodybuilder. So it's going to be an online clinic. I pray the Wi-Fi will be working properly. But anyway, let me show you what this meal is all about. So today will be a higher carb day, not a true high carb day, but it'll be 300 grams of carbs in total, which means that the, pre uh, the breakfast, the pre-workout meal, the post-workout meal, and the post-post-workout meal all have carbs. And the last two meals are without carbs. So this is 65 grams of basmati rice. And these are the vegetables I'm adding. Just a little bit of zucchini, low FODMAP, digests really easily. This is asparagus. So I'm putting a few of these with each meal or some celery. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, I want to get used to these vegetables expelling some excess water from my body. And it'll actually be a bit less warm in Orlando, which is good because now I'm drinking a whole lot, not only to get used to drinking the water, but also because I'm sweating so much here. So uh, that's why I don't want to overdo it on the water diuretic um, vegetables here, but I still want to get used to them. So when I'm probably loading, I'll have two or three of these with each meal. And in total, if you eat six or seven meals, you have quite a lot of these in your whole diet getting a minor effect but when you're in super deep conditioning minor effects is what it's all about and then we also have some codfish a very easy to digest nice white fish already prepared just gonna put it in a microwave for 30 seconds and it's done and uh, yeah let me just show you the end result but we're also adding some pink Himalayan 
salt delicious. This is the meal I'm talking about. Golden rice, zucchini, asparagus, and these beautiful white codfishes cooked to perfection. Added Himalayan pink salt to flavor. If it's too salty, that's your body telling you, hey, that's not as much as I need. If it's too bland, your body is telling you, I could need some more to replenish all the electrolytes. If it's just right, then it's just right. Let's enjoy. Alrighty, meal gone. So it's time to train the legs in this old school, old school oversized t-shirt because it's going to be in an old school gym, an old school workout. And because it's a higher carb day, we will go demand a lot of carbs from the body by making the workout very intense. You will see, see you there. All right, it's time for the leg workout. This is one of the last leg workouts I'll have. I have one after this one, but that will be a much lighter leg workout. So this is pretty much the last heavier leg workout. However, it still will be different compared to the leg workouts you're used to seeing of me. So normally I do the warm-ups then one or two working sets really going to fill your and pretty much going to the edge of my ability in terms of the last few reps but right now that's not necessary anymore all that is necessary is getting blood in the muscle and still stimulated enough for a muscle protein synthesis response so that the muscle will be maintained in size because right now being in a caloric deficit doing a lot of cardio and not a lot of carbs for example your body wants to burn energy inside and what you want it to burn is fat and not muscle so you want to give as many signals to your muscles as possible that you still need them to be as big as they are and as strong as they are so that they won't get burned and only the fat will be burned instead. So that's basically what the last two weeks of workouts look like. You can't really expect to be as strong as in the off season. Obviously you weigh less, you're more tired. Uh, you don't you simply don't have the energy inside the muscles stored to be able to do that kind of weight so in short this workout is basically first doing a couple of warm-up sets of around five to six reps that's normal until I hit my final weight but when I hit that final weight I hit it four times consecutively and I um Notice that this is a technique that William Bonac uses himself a little bit. I watched him training the legs and it happens to be a technique I like to use near the end of the contest prep myself. So uh, he does actually a little more volume, I believe. But I like to stick to the exercises that I know I feel very well in the muscle. So for example, on the leg extension, I did like three or four warm-ups. Warm uh, progressively going up in weight until I feel like okay now I can hit a set from 12 to 15 or basically I'll hit failure or very close to failure at the very end and then hit four sets like that with a little rest in between making sure the muscle is taxed filled up with metabolites and getting the signal of muscle stimulus and now after the leg extension uh, we warmed up the knees and the quads and now we're gonna warm up the hamstrings so as you can see in the, in the warm-up sets here and even the working sets, you can see that the range of motion is complete. That's a very nice thing about seated leg curls. The stretch is unique. So the laying leg curl, you can go heavier, but a seated leg curl has a superior uh, range of motion in terms of the tension at the stretched part, which is actually true in literature. They say that because the stretched portion of the range of motion is uh, there's more tension there on the seated leg curl uh, that's why you can create more muscle mass over time on the seated leg curl compared to the laying leg curl but I still believe you should do both uh, throughout the week at least or throughout your leg workouts to make sure you hit every single angle of those hamstrings and that's what I'm intending to do next off season as well but anyway the eccentric part of the range of motion is always be controlled so explosively go down 
contract the hamstrings and then slowly go up making sure the hamstrings are being stretched more and more but the most important thing about a seated leg curl regardless if you're in contest prep or in off season or improvement season whatever you want to call it is that that little supporting pad above your knees above your quads should be as low as possible and then what my hands are doing is pressing myself down again down and back against the seat making sure that my buttocks my hamstrings my legs are staying put on that seat so that i don't use any momentum in the movement that only the hamstrings are being used because it is an isolation movement and before hitting any compounds you don't want to use any other muscle than the muscle that you're working here specifically because this is the first combat movement now this is an interesting movement i believe it was called the squat press or like hack squat press or something like that it's like a hybrid between a hack squat and a leg press so the range of motion here isn't as deep as usual but the tension is incredible it may be hard to see or hard to imagine but if you've ever done this exercise you will know that there will be no lower back pain at all no lower back impingements or lactic acid buildup is just the legs and mostly the quad so i just put my feet exactly as wide as my hip width and i make sure that i can put the maximum amount of tension and pressure through my legs that way i'm not trying to do any fancy or weird techniques so i just want to go down 90 degrees if i go down even more my knees would start to hurt they would start to get under uh, more tension and stress than I want them to and I want the muscle to be under constant tension here And it just felt really great. It just felt really amazing Because if I, I I literally almost can't go any deeper because you can see that my legs are starting to touch my stomach there And if I go any deeper, I would simply lean on my legs and then it would not be tension at the bottom anyway so you want to keep the tension on the legs the whole time and the same principle here applies as the previous two exercises first do some warm-ups until you hit the weight that you know you can hit like 10 to 12 reps with and do four sets with that given weight just stimulating that muscle to stay put getting blood in there getting lactic acid in there getting metabolites in there a little bit of toxins which are good during the workout causing inflammation and inflammation causes muscle growth muscle retention and maintenance of muscle mass so the tension on the quads here is constant and the reason why you don't feel anything in your back at all is because i'm leaning forward quite a lot and it looks like a weird movement but trust me if you see some top pro bodybuilders who are doing the hack squats they're actually putting like a foam pad beneath or behind their neck so that their back is more in this position because it allows you to make it look like and feel like a squat a lot more and uh, go down without feeling your lower back at all it feels a lot safer it feels a lot more stable that way and you can really focus on just the legs so you're going all the way down until you feel that the tension is being lost because of your upper body touching the legs and then go upwards until you feel your knees are about to lock in and then you go b uh, back down again so you don't lose tension on the quads at all times all right so this next one is an interesting as well and i wanted to show this first set so you can actually see that when you're doing a machine for the first time don't just do it and stand somewhere on the on the pl uh, platform and just do all your reps make sure it feels correct make sure it's in line with your own anatomy so you can see me moving my feet up and down a little bit until i feel that i uh, am in the right position to actually feel the quads the glutes especially the hamstrings and even the adductors so the entire leg are involved here but especially the glutes and the adductors I felt really greatly here because my stance is quite wide to be able to go further down so the range of motion here is a lot deeper compared to the exercise I did before and it allows me to hit the glutes a lot as well really drive this movement from the glutes but automatically because we already did those previous exercises you will feel it in the quads and the hamstrings as well making it a complete leg development movement so i like to call this the reverse 
hack squat even though it's not a true hack squat machine it really feels like a reverse hack squat movement which i used to do in different gyms we have our own hack squat at 100 percent fit gym of course but it doesn't allow or it doesn't give you the space to sit on there in a reverse position like i am right here so if you're able to do this movement trust me try it out and uh, what you want to do is start it with a light weight and then find out what foot position what leg position feels natural to you so this feels the most natural to me if you look my knees aren't buckling my feet are staying quite nicely in place normally i'd actually uh, wear knee sleeve and weightlifting shoes but i uh, didn't take them with me during this workout but with those i would be even i would be able to go even deeper but you can see my calves are touching my hamstrings which is important to be able to reach a fuller and deeper range of motion and the deeper you can go the more stretch is experienced in the muscle and the more growth will ultimately occur so that's a great way to do the movement and then the next compound normally i would only do two true compounds and then move on to another isolation movement for example so the third one is a unilateral movement so the first two compounds were actually with two legs at the same time hitting the leg from different angles and this one is simply doing one leg at a time to really feel if there are any differences in what the legs have done up until this point. So I simply started with the, uh, with the right side because to me there's no difference in strength or stamina, really. So I just go all the way down until you feel a maximum stretch, especially around the glute area, but also the quad area. And when I press up, you can see that my legs aren't fully extending this is very important and this is what i write down in all of my workout plans as well when you're doing a leg press especially if you're not going super duper heavy on your last set without taking breathers simply don't lock out your knees because if you do the tension is lost from the muscle and transferred to the joint and the knees which is not good for time under tension and that is one of the muscle building principles of bodybuilding and then the last movement is a simple adductor machine and trust me as i am talking to you guys right now i still have soreness in the adductors because i haven't done this movement for so long so that was an amazing workout for sure all right guys just got back home from a pretty intense leg workout and now it's time for the post workout meal which will be 100 grams of basmati rice a little bit of celery, a little bit of asparagus, not too much because I want this meal digested quickly. I'm going to steam those vegetables because if you steam them, they will be able to, dige to be digested even easier. So nice and soft and 250 grams of codfish. That's what I'll be having on the post-workout. And then three more meals to go and somewhere along the way, some steps to fill in. Not the full 10,000 but uh, probably around seven to 8,000 today. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna check the weight once more because this morning it was very close to the weight limit. And uh, yeah, I don't wanna be below that at all until it needs to be. So let's show you the end result of that meal. All right, guys, this is the post rocket meal. Just a nice and clean meal with the rice, the golden rice, plenty of Himalayan salt in there. We have the white fish and we have the celery and asparagus just a little bit as you can see and of course we can't go wrong with the kiwi either the hole in there is taking out the hard piece which is not tasty at all and after this we'll have three more meals so let's enjoy this one while we work and keep working on the emails and the nutrition plans the workout plans the coaching and of course the videos for you guys Let's do this. Next meal, and it's a small one, yet effective one, just 50 grams of oats, uh, 200 grams of liquid egg whites, half a scoop of white isolate, and 10 grams of almond butter. Going in quick, after this, gonna walk, have two more meals, and enjoy a good night's sleep. Let's enjoy. Okay, just got back from a brisk walk, and honestly, I've been starting to feel more and more tired especially on my leg day where it's very, uh, you know, a large, long, intense training session. Leg days always are, they should be, but you do feel it in the legs and in the entire body afterwards. Uh, but anyway, we arrived at the next meal, which is what I'm having right after the walk. 
And you know, for some reason, digestion still isn't perfect, but uh, there's a benefit and there's advantages. The benefit is you're not really that hungry, but at the same time, you do want to get your meals in in a regular schedule. So the meal is quite small that I'm having right now, but still pretty amazing. Let's check it out. All right, so this is it. 250 grams of Nordic salmon, which is of course always delicious. And just a little bit of Brussels sprouts and some uh, pumpkin. Uh, the Brussels sprouts aren't that many because they, in high quantities, might cause bloating. bloating but the pumpkin never does, so that's good. There's just a little bit of uh, mustard on here, zero calories, and uh, that's it. Salt and pepper, of course, and some thyme, uh, I mean some dill, actually, on the salmon. So let's enjoy this one, guys. All right, guys, this will be the last meal of the day. Again, two whole eggs, 350 grams of egg whites, 50 grams of spinach. That's the only real change, but we still have some spinach left, so I wanna use it up, and it's always good in an egg omelette so uh, yeah this will be the last meal and on that note i really want to thank you once again for watching tomorrow there will be another video and we are inching closer and closer to traveling to orlando florida for the classic physique olympia thanks for watching and don't forget to stay golden